the Valuspa, stanzas 26 to 30. 26. In swelling rage, then rose up Thor. Seldom he sits when he hears such things. And the oaths were broken, the words and bonds, the mighty pledges between them made. 27. I know of the horn of Heimdall hidden under the high-reaching holy tree. On it there pours from Valfather's pledge a mighty stream. Would you know more yet? 28. Alone I sat when the old one sought me, the terror of gods, and gazed in mine eyes. What hast thou to ask? Why comest thou hither? Odin, I know where thine eye is hidden. I know where Odin's eye is hidden, deep in the wide-famed well of Mimir. Mead from the pledge of oath in each mum does Mimir drink. Would you know yet more? 29. Necklaces had I and rings from her father. Wise was my speech and my magic wisdom. Widely I saw over all the worlds. 30. On all sides saw I Valkyries assemble, ready to ride to the ranks of the gods. Skuld bore the shield, and Skogel rolled next. Guth, Hild, Gondol, Girskogel, of Herjan's mains, maidens. The list have ye heard. Valkyries ready to ride o'er the earth. 26. Thor, the thunder god, son of Odin, and Jorth, Earth, particularly Harpersloth and Thrymskvitha, Passam, Oaths, etc. The gods, by violating their oaths to the giant who rebuilt Asgard, aroused the undying hatred of the giant's race, and thus the giants were among their enemies in the final battle. 27. Here the vulva turns from her memories of the past to a statement of some of Othan's own secrets in his eternal search for knowledge. Stanzas 27 to 29. Bug reports this stanza after stanza 29, the horn of Heimdall, the Gjallar horn, Shrieking horn, with which Heimdall watchmen of the gods will summon them to the last battle. Till that time the horn is buried under Yildrasil, Valfather's pledge, Uthin's eye, the sun, which he gave to the water spirit, Mimir or Mim, in exchange for the latter's wisdom. It appears here and in stanza 29 as a drinking vessel from which Mimir drinks the magic mead and from which he pours water on the ash of Yildrasil. Uthin's sacrifice of his one eye in order to gain knowledge of his final doom, is one of the series of disasters leading up to the destruction of the gods. There were several differing versions of the story of Odin's relations with Mimir. Another one, quite incompatible with this, appears in stanza 47. In the manuscripts I know and I see appear as she knows and she sees. CF note on 21. 28. The Hawksbrook version omits all of stanzas 28 to 34. Stanzas 27 being there followed by stanzas 40 and 41. Regis indicates stanzas 28 and 29 as a single stanza. Bug puts stanza 28 after stanza 22 as the second stanza of his reconstructed poem. The vulva here addresses Odin directly, intimating that, although he has not told her, she knows why he has come to her and what he has already suffered in his search for knowledge regarding his doom. 
her reiterated would you know yet more seems to mean I have proved my wisdom by telling of the past and of your own secrets. It is your will that I tell likewise of the fate in store for you. The old one, Othin. The line, I know where Othin's eye is hidden. Not in either manuscript is a conjectural emendation based on Snorri's paraphrase. Bug puts this stanza after stanza 20. 29. This is apparently the trans transitional stanza in which the vulva, rewarded by Odin for her knowledge of the past, stanzas 1 through 29, is induced to proceed with her real prophecy, stanzas 31 through 66. Some editors turn the stanza into the third person, making it a narrative link. Bug, on the other hand, puts it, footnote P14, after stanza 28, as the third stanza of the poem. No lacuna is indicated in the manuscripts, and editors have attempted various emendations. Here, Father, Father of the Host, Uthen. 30. Valkyries. These choosers of the slain, CF stanza 1, wrote, note, bring the bravest warriors killed in battle to Valhall in order to reinforce the gods for their final struggle. They are also called wish maidens, as the fulfillers of Othan's wishes. The conception of the nat supernatural warrior maiden was presumably brought to Scandinavia in the very early times from the South Germanic races and later it was woven with the likewise South Germanic tradition of the Swan Maiden. A third complication developed when the original, originally quite human women of the hero legends were endowed with the qualities of both Valkyries and Swan Maidens. As in the cases of Brunhild, C.F. Grip Pispo, Introductory Note, Zvava, C.F. Helgatvita, Hjörvarthusonar, prose after stanza 5 and note, and Sigrun, Helgakvitha, Hundingsbanna, 17 and note. The list of names here given may be an interpolation. A quite different list is given in Grimnismo. 36. Ranks of the Gods. Some editors regard the word thus translated as a specific place name. Herhan, leader of hosts, Uthin. It is worth noting that the name Hild, warrior, is the basis of Brunhild, warrior in male coat. That is the end of this one. And join me for the next. Thank you.